Welcome to another build video. This time I don't think much of this is going to surprise anyone, but I wanted to put it out there for those of you still getting your PvP builds together. This is a very bread and butter build, especially before the Intel revamp where this was one of the most common ship setups. I'm also going to try something a little different here. The video will be the same as my other ones, but I'm also going to put a link to the PMG file from Sets, which is a new app currently under development. This is a program you can run on your computer that allows you to build ships from STO and it pulls its data straight from the wiki. You can save your builds as PMG files, which is both an image as well as contains the rest of the information for the build, so you can easily send and share these files with others so they can see your build information. It's still in its alpha stage, but I'll put a link to it as well as the save file for this build in the description of the video. The Legendary Defiant shares a nearly identical bridge officer layout to the engineering pilot ships, such as the Ajax, Quitu Raptor, and the Warbird. Despite sharing the same seating and thus the same build philosophy, there are some minor differences between these ships that you might want to consider if you don't have one yet. The Defiant has the highest hull capacity, and since so many players have the 10th anniversary bundle already, that makes this the default choice for a lot of people. However, it does have a 5-3 weapon layout, which is fairly unique for a ship with pilot maneuvers, but that reduces some of its outgoing damage compared to the other three, which have 5-2 layouts with an experimental weapon slot. The Defiant also has a lower turn rate and impulse modifier in trade for its added tankiness. The three other pilot ships all share identical turn rates and impulse modifiers, and they all have experimental weapons, so they're only slightly different from each other. The Raptor has a bit more hull capacity, but less than the Defiant. This is probably the most well-rounded one. The Ajax has lower hull, but more shields, which makes it probably the worst of the bunch. The Warbird has both the low hull of the Ajax and the low shields of the Raptor, but has one unique aspect, the Singularity Core. This also comes at the cost of reduced power levels, which is why you'll see Warbirds using consoles like Enhanced Plasma Induction Manifold, or experimental weapons like Graviton Implosion instead of Soliton Impeller, since the Warbird struggles a little bit to keep the power levels up, and it also makes it a little bit slower as well. However, Singularity abilities like Warp Shadows or Singularity Jump, or even Quantum Absorption can save your life in a pinch, so even though stats-wise it may seem to be the worst one, those active abilities can sometimes make or break a fight. The Warbird also has Romulan Battle Cloak, so you can cloak mid-combat to escape, but be careful with this as it's not a guarantee. Many ships in the current PvP meta can spot you through cloak pretty easily. I'm going to be focused on the Defiant, but I'll make notes on the other pilot ships where necessary. I started this channel not that long ago, so those of you that only know me through this may not be aware, but I have tons of videos flying the Kui-2 Raptor as my main dogfighter build. And there was a time when I'd say the majority of PvP dogfighter builds were the Raptor or Warbird. The Intel revamp has pushed some of those builds to the side, at least as long as the revamp abilities are still bugged and broken. But you could do a lot worse than these, and since they're all available at fleet level directly from the Zen store, they're a great option. So the gear, which I'm sure won't surprise anyone. I'm using the Lucari Pizio Polaron for technical overload and four phaser dual beam banks. Of course, one of them is the Discovery Dual Beam, and the others are Targeting Linked. In the rear, I'm using a standard Phaser Omni alongside the Inhibiting Phaser Omni from Gamma Reputation, which has a small debuff when moving faster than our target. The last slot is the Martok Torpedo. This is because I'm using the Martok console as well for the two-piece set, and I couldn't use the Martok Omni since I have the Inhibiting Omni slotted. The last slot is really flexible. For example, I could have used the Martok Omni instead and swapped in the inhibiting phaser turret, or I could have used the Terran Task Force phaser array, and I've seen people use tractor beam mines as well to fill this extra slot. You could even try the kinetic cutting beam if you like being disappointed. Another alternative would be to use all arrays, maybe something like advanced phaser arrays which come in the 10th anniversary bundle too, or whatever themed phasers you like. Then you could spend a little more time on target, although damage would drop off a bit accordingly. In an older video I posted on the 4-4 layout Undine Chirax, I'm using 8 arrays and that build was very effective, so it's definitely an option. Otherwise, I'm using the competitive 3-piece set for bonus energy resistance. At the moment, this consists of the innervated engines, bolstered core which offers some exotic resistances, and the fortified shield which gives me more hull capacity. 
The deflector is the colony one to maximize my critical damage, although as I've said in other videos, there are several other deflectors that work well for different situations. Starting with my tactical consoles, I have four colony protomatter consoles which help me maximize my healing. The fifth slot is Lorca's Fire Controls, which works with the Discovery Dual Beam Bank for more crit severity. Alternatively, I could slot a fifth colony console here for more healing. In my science slots, I have the Immolating Phaser Lance alongside the Cutting Tractor Beam. Cutting Tractor Beam increases the amount of damage the Phaser Lance does substantially, so this pairing is my attempt to really maximize my forward-facing damage potential. Since this build does not have much perception, I generally will only have a short window to deal damage against ships using Intel Team on a cycle, so I want to make sure that damage is as high as possible. Don't worry if you don't have the Lance. It's a great console, but with these two slots free, you could slot another survivability console or something else to add more damage, or both. This character is actually not my main PvP dogfighter. My main does not have the Lance and performs just fine. All I'm saying is, don't get hung up on the Lance, or any other minor detail on this build. There are a hundred different options for these things, and a lot of them are side grades, not pure upgrades. In the engineering console slots, I have Alachi Rift Jump, which has a nice passive accuracy bonus and also helps me escape from tough situations. This console can be activated even while disabled, which is why I use it now so much over the Picard Maneuver, which has a shorter cooldown. The next slot is Bioneural Infusion Circuits, which adds control, hull capacity, and crit severity, all very desirable. Then I have Hull Image Refractors, which is just here for the passive temporary hull it provides, and maybe the occasional emergency. The last is the Martok Defensive Configuration Console, which forms the two-piece with the rear weapon. So in total, it's giving me a lot of shield and hull HP, more power, turn rate, and also 2.5 crit chance and 15 accuracy. This console is free from a mission, so it really should be on a lot of builds but you could consider also a Pax Triburnium instead if you don't have the two-piece set. My universal slot is just another universal console, in this case, Hostile Acquisition, which provides a nice passive 30 accuracy and 30 control, and a really nice clicky which can be used offensively or defensively. This will slow and reduce the resistance of your target, as well as reduce their outgoing damage, and since it's a hold effect, it also interrupts certain buffs like DPRM or Molecular Phase Inversion. So if someone is using those, just apply this to them to break it. My specializations are Command as Primary, this is primarily for the boost morale clicky which clears debuffs, and at the moment is the only thing that clears the disable from evade target lock. Now that this patch has gone to console 2, even you guys will have to deal with it. Sorry for that by the way, I reported the bugs through every official channel and even some unofficial ones and I didn't make any headway. Anyway. My secondary specialization is Strategist right now, which gets me a little extra incoming healing, and if I flip Threatening Stance off, even some added critical severity. This is risky, however, as I'm more susceptible to drains and damage over time effects without Miracle Worker as my secondary spec. Specializations can't be changed once you enter an arena map, so keep in mind when choosing your setup here. There are probably certain situations where one will be better than another, but you have to kind of guess since you can't change it mid-fight like you can with traits or equipment. As for traits, this build is a bit more focused on damage than debuffs. I'm using Contexts for Kings, which provides both damage resistance as well as bonus damage, Pseudo Submission, which is a useful placate to avoid being too easily focused, and traits like Fresh from r and r and Smuggler's Luck to hopefully avoid some control effects. I also have Give Your All from the Engineering R&D to help dodge some incoming damage. The rest of the traits are more offensively oriented. I'm using Fragment of AI Tech, which boosts both beam damage as well as technical overload damage. Self-modulating Fire, which allows for more shield penetrating damage, and Terran Targeting Systems for added crit severity. The last two are Intelligent Agent Attaché, which allows me to use my Captain abilities, especially Subnucleonic Beam, faster, and the Boimler effect which helps guarantee my ability cooldowns. My Starship traits include Weapon Emitter Overdrive, which was my event campaign choice last year, and Super Weapon Ingenuity for continuous beam overload uptime. And then two damage improving traits, Superior Pedal to the Metal and Preferential Targeting. These help this build really cut down temporary hull rapidly, but it does lack the debuff potential of the build I showed in my JHAS video, for example. I play around with these two trait slots and try different things. A lot of them are very situational. 
The last slots are Rhythmic Rumble, which drastically reduces weapon power cost as well as increasing resistances, and Invincible, which helps keep me alive if I make a mistake or get focused. Reputation traits, I have Dyson Advanced Targeting Systems and Tyler's Duality for crit improvements, and Viral Engine's Overload to help slow down enemies. Advanced Hull Reinforcement and Evasive Tactics help ensure my own survival, but I could use something like Precision instead to deal even more damage. This is my preferred bridge officer layout, but there's some room for customization here too, of course. In my main pilot seat, I have Pilot Team 1, which clears movement debuffs like those from Chronoton Torpedoes or Plasma Storms, but only for the first two seconds. Still, with Fresh from r, r I can activate this every 10 seconds, so it's very useful. Then I have Attack Pattern Lambda 2. This increases my accuracy rating and perception, and in theory should lower my target's accuracy, although at the moment it actually increases it due to a bug. Maybe because of that it might be better to use something like Omega instead, but I like having the extra accuracy, and I still cling to the hope that they'll someday fix what is essentially a single math operator. Next is Beam Overload 3, which is my main source of damage, as well as activates my healing tack consoles. In the commander slot, I have Hold Together 3, which is a nice resist, heal, and resistance boost when used at the right time, and has the added benefit of clearing some hazard effects, although it's only one per second, so it's not that useful when dealing with a lot of psi spam. Next I'll talk about my tack seat, which is just tack team to distribute shields and clear debuffs like an enemy's AP lambda off, and cannon scatter volley. Scatter Volley activates preferential targeting on this build, as well as the Colony Protomatter TAC consoles for even more self-healing. Tactical Team sometimes causes misfires on firing cycles, so it's worth considering dropping it and instead using something like Chemosite Laced Weaponry instead to add more damage. In the Engineering seat, I have Emergency Power to Engines 1, cycling with Emergency Power to Shields 3. This helps keep my shields up with the added hardness, and I still have respectable speed. I'm never going to outrun a pilot raptor, for example, so there's no reason to run engine 3 on this ship, or at least that's my thought process. Auxiliary to dampers fills the middle spot. This gives me immunity to disables like evade target lock and to repel effects like gravity well. Depending on the situation, I could swap this for aux to structural integrity field and use the placate duty officer to be a little harder to target. The next part is the only minor difference between this Defiant and the other pilot ships I mentioned before. On the Defiant, the Science seat is not a spec seat, but the Universal LT seat is also a pilot seat. On the other pilot ships, the Science seat has pilot, while the Universal is just a plain non-spec seat. I have it in the more standard configuration here. The Science seat has Science Team to clear debuffs, along with Photonic Officer to improve cooldowns. And the Universal seat is used as an Engineer, which has Engineering Team to clear those debuffs, and Reverse Shield Polarity 1. Reverse Shield Polarity can be very useful, but I do find myself not needing it all that often, so the Defiant has the advantage of using another pilot ability without giving up Photonic Officer. I could use Clean Getaway 1, for example, here for more speed, or drop Hold Together 3 down to 1 and use Clean Getaway 3 and put Hold Together 1 here. Either way, a bit more flexibility with less risk. I'm always hesitant to give up Photonic Officer on my builds, although with Borg Duty Officers and the Boimler Effect trait, it can be done more easily now than before. Moving on to duty officers, I'm using the Auxiliary to Dampers extension doff to guarantee its uptime, but if I switch to Aux to Sif, I'd use the Placate doff instead. Then I have a Warp Core Engineer which clears debuffs, very useful, and the Con Officer from Phoenix that recharges evasive maneuvers. The last three are my attempts to increase damage. 20 of 47 increases accuracy and armor penetration, and I also have a blue crit severity doff and a blue beam overload shield pen officer. I've been playing around with these last three open slots and there are lots of options. I could use more than one penetration doff or maybe add 25 of 47 for even more accuracy or drop one of these and use something like 35 or 40 of 47 which are Borg officers that improve cooldowns between abilities which is something I'd more seriously consider if I gave up Photonic Officer in my Bridge Officer layout. Prior to the Boimler effect, those cooldown officers were very commonly used, but I'm not sure they're as necessary now. So there you have it, a more current iteration of the classic Beam Dogfighter build. There's plenty of room to customize to your flying style, and I've seen lots of different variants around this core build, so feel free to experiment and try stuff out. 
I also think it's useful to understand the basic mechanics of this build before moving on to ships like the Deimos and Legendary Jehas, which still use these fundamentals but add in intel abilities. I've seen far too many pilot plus intel ships like those come in with some critical flaw, like not having two activation for the protomatters and such because players get too focused on adding the intel powers and forget the other important pieces of this build. Even with intel as powerful as it is, this type of build is still viable, just a little different from before, such as using aux to damp and command spec to deal with disables, but flying it is still largely the same. Thanks for watching.